Apple unveils a new iPod Touch, what? and more. Coming up on today's episode of Glades and Tech News. Hey, Gadgeteer, you're just in time for the latest episode of the world's only 3-in-1 show on tech, gadget, and gaming news. That's right, this is the latest in tech news. My name is Taylor American. If you're new here, hit that subscribe or follow button right now so that you don't miss the newest episodes. We do this on the weekday. And uh, hold off on that like or heart or whatever button you use to show your support thumbs until you get to a, a section of today's show that you actually like. Now, speaking of what's not to like is, well, there won't be any shows at all next week. I just wanted to make this announcement as is. Next week, I will be on vacation up north, as we here in Wisconsin call it. So uh, I will be unavailable to record or post or do any shows. So um, I guess consider it a summer break for a week, but I'll be back the following week. But there will be shows ne- this week, There will be no shows next week. So now that that's out of the way, let's get to the good news today. And the good news today is while Apple decided to drop the latest iteration of its iPod, yeah, we'll be taking a look at that. We'll also be taking a look at the most important announcements from Computex 2019. Interestingly enough, we'll also be taking a look at someone spending $1.3 million on a laptop infected with six of the most destructive computer viruses why in the world would they do that that's news of the weird for you today so we'll be taking a look at that in gadget news we'll also be taking a look at uh, hp's envy laptops getting a new wood option we'll also be looking at intel's vision for dual screen gaming laptops and for gaming news we'll be taking a look at pokemon sleep a new app that helps you sleep better and i gotta say it's gotta correspond with what's going on pokemon go right now currently which is you can starting tonight catch a snorlax but he has to be sleeping or something like that also we'll be looking at fortnite just revealing a giant monster eyeball under polar peak interesting But first, well, did you know that more than 570 new websites are created every minute? Bet you didn't know that. I also bet you didn't know that by 2020, video will account for about 80% of all internet traffic. If you just thought you're here to hang out and read stuff, well, or listen to stuff, you're sorely mistaken. 80% of us are here. Watch them videos. You know, them Netflixes, them Hulus, them YouTubes. Um, yeah, video. So make good video, please. So, <laughs> uh, okay, I got that out of the way. I survived. Surprise, surprise. Moving right along to today in tech history, we always like to take a look back on today in tech history, being that today is May 28th, 2019. On this day in 1959, a committee forms to develop a new language. A committee formed to develop COBOL, or Common Business Oriented Language. The group of researchers drawn from several computer manufacturers and the Pentagon designed a program designed, if I can speak, for business use that sought easy readability and as much machine independence as possible. Although programmer Howard Bromberg prematurely made a tombstone for COBOL out of fear that the language had no future. It continues to be used by businesses today, although, well, today it's far few and in between. The tombstone is not now part of the Computer History Museum's collection. And also, on this day in history, in 1987, CompuServe releases the graphics interchange format, known as GIF, standard as a new computer graphics file format. GIF or GIF, or however you say it, uh, due to color limitations, the, the format currently is unsuitable for reproducing color photographs, but it is well suited for more simple images such as graphics or logos with solid areas of color. Now, this made it probably the most popular graphics format for the early internet until the famous GIF licensing controversy uh, soured many designers to its use. The PNG format was developed in response as an alternative to GIF to get around those licensing issues. However, all relevant patents have since expired, and a GIF format may now be freely used, and as you can tell, it's been used even until this day. Today still sees widespread use, especially when simple animations are needed. Also, 
On this day in 1929, the Warner Brothers film On With The Show, the first talking movie in all color, debuts at New York City's Winter Garden Theater. The film uses two-color Technicolor and Vitaphone sound. Yeah, now we got Dolby Atmos. Sorry. Well, that's technology for you. Well, let's head on to today's feature story. Speaking of feature stories, holy cow, guys, Apple's newest innovation just came out. They dropped a bomb. Not even kidding you. It's the iPad. No, it's not April 1st. No, this ain't some April Fool's Day joke. No, I'm not going to be playing Rick Astley. I'm never going to give you up because I can never can give you up. Matter of fact, I can't even get up the Zoom that I have somewhere in the basement storage. Nobody wants to buy it. Well, you remember the iPod? If not, Apple is here to jog your memory. The tech giant surprise released a new iPod Touch today. It's first since 2015. The, well, air quote, new product, which runs on an A10 Fusion chip that a- Apple's president of product marketing, Greg Jasbiak, says makes the device twice as fast as before, is available in 32 gig, 128, and 256 models, retailing for 199 299 and 399 respectively. That's $100, so 200 300 400 respectively. Other spec upgrades are minimal. The device does not support Touch ID or Face ID, not like you needed it, boasts the standard 4-inch screen seen on previous generations of the iPhone and iPod Touch and features the same 3.5mm headphone jack as before. Audiophiles who cursed Apple for nixing the jack on its iPhone line a few years ago may rejoice here. Uh, but because of the faster chip, though, the iPod Touch can now support group FaceTime calls and augmented reality apps. It comes in seven colors, and the 256 version has the biggest storage capacity that Apple has ever offered in an iPad. Now, you might be wondering, well, why is Apple bothering with it at all? Well, the company's financials point to an answer. Thanks to their four-figure price tags, Apple's iPhone sales have been in a slump. Apple services category, which includes the popular apps Apple News and and Plus and Apple Music and Plus Plus and Double Triple Plus, is now its most promising sector in terms of revenue and growth, but Apple still needs compelling hardware to drive to that area. Duh. The debut of the refreshed iPod Touch, perfect for children or adult users who might want the capabilities of a smartphone without needing to make calls, comes right as Apple buffs up its existing music, video, and news service offerings and prepares for releasing a new gaming subscription product called Apple Arcade. Now, if you're thinking or you're under the impression that Apple had killed its iPod line altogether, you might be thinking of the iPod Nano and Shuffle, which were discontinued in 2017 or of the cult iPod Classic with the white spin wheel, which met its end in 2014. But here it is, in all its glory. And if you're sitting there listening to this show going, Taylor, you're talking as if there's videos or photos or something. Yeah, there is. Head on over to youtube.com forward slash tech news gadget to see today's show. As always, no matter what format you're listening on, however you're consuming the content, you can always head on over to technewsgadget.net forward slash 126 to get today's show notes. And you can click on all the articles that you want and uh, read away to your heart's content. I don't know. What do you think, good, bad, or otherwise? Are you excited about the new iPod Touch? Purchasing it actually looks nicer. I'm actually surprised. I didn't think they could have pulled it off. They did. It looks nice. Crisp, clean, and hiccups. I heard that. That's the wife in the other room. <laughs> She's, I guess that, is that your excited tone for you're excited about the new iPod Touch? Yes, it was on Poipus. She's trying to get in on my show. Uh, okay, so, yeah, Um. with that being said, I think she left her comments about the new iPod Touch. I kind of shared a little bit of mine, but I'd love to hear yours, so feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. Okay, Computex 2019. What's going on right now? Well, what'd you miss? Well, a whole bunch, especially if you weren't paying attention. But one of the world's biggest computing tech trade shows kicked off its 2019 conference this morning in Taipei, Taiwan, and there have already been tons of big announcements. If you're looking to upgrade your system, buy something new within the next few months, you'll definitely want to scan through the roundup that Lifehacker put together for us for the most notable product announcements from day one. I guess we'll be looking at, first off, the Ryzen 3rd generation CPUs, and uh, 
AMD was there dropping several big announcements at the conference. One of the biggest was unveiling its new third gen Ryzen CPU line, which launches on July 7th. This includes AMD's newest flagship CPU, the Ryzen 9 3900X, which features 12 cores and 24 threads and a 4.6 GHz boost frequency. This puts the Ryzen 9300X ahead of Intel's Core i9 9920X and at i9 9900, but at a far lower price point. Four other CPUs round out the Ryzen third gen lineup. Here's a complete list. We got the Ryzen 5 3600, the 3600X, the Ryzen 7, 3700X, 3800X, and the Ryzen 9 3900X, all ranging between 200 to 500 bucks. While these CPUs are available for desktops, Asus's ROG Zephyrus G GA502 gaming laptops are equipped with Ryzen 3rd Gen CPUs. Acer also confirmed during Computex that the Ryzen 3000 series will also be present on some of its upcoming gaming laptops. Also, the Intel Core i9-9900KS showed off their new gaming chip as well. It includes an integrated graphics chip, boasts 8 cores, 16 threads, and a base 4.0 GHz frequency and 5.0 GHz boosted frequency applicable to all cores. This makes the CPU Intel's fastest gaming chip currently available. Uh, TDP hasn't been released or disclosed, nor pricing or expected release date, but it's safe to say it will likely be pretty expensive when it does come out. Also, we're looking at the Radon RX 5000 series Navi RDNA GPUs. Pivoting to GPUs, AMD also announced the Radon RX 5000 series the new line is AMD's response to NVIDIA's new RTX line, and AMD spent several minutes during its Computex keynote presentation showing off a raid on RX 5700 card running to benchmark tests alongside an NVIDIA RTX 2070. The RX 5700 appeared to best the RTX 2070's performance by about 10%, though uh, we're still wondering about the ray tracing confirmation on that one. They also have the uh, ooh, link to the entire keynote of AMD's presentation. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and click on the link for that. The RX 5700 will be released sometime in July and AMD will provide more information during its live presentation at E3 uh, on June 10. Also, Nvidia RTX Quadro mobile GPUs was announced by Nvidia. It showed off a line of mobile 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, and Quadro T2000 and T1000 cards as well. These will bring the same Turing tech found on the desktop RTX cards and beefy gaming laptops to mobile workstations and smaller laptops. Obviously, we covered yesterday the upcoming Razer Blade Studio 15 edition and 17 edition laptops will both run these new cards, and they seem pretty powerful. As for motherboards, AMD came out with the X. 570 and PCIe 4.0. AMD <laughs> is about everywhere this year, which includes several new motherboards from Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, and others that use AMD's X570 chipset. These motherboards will be fully compatible with the new Ryzen CPUs and the Radon RX 5000 cards and will include PCIe 4.0 support. In fact, a couple of high-speed PCIe 4.0 SSDs on the horizon Specifically, a 4.95 gigabyte model from Corsair and a 5 gigabyte device from Gigabyte will need a Ryzen 3000 series chop and X570 motherboard in order to reach their crazy data transfer rates. However, this push to PCIe 4.0 also means that the X570 will not be quite so well backwards compatible with other chips. So keep in mind when you're putting together your, your future gaming systems or wanting to tweak your current ones or go out and buy one, make sure your parts are compatible. Uh, AMD came out with a chart for an explanation of which components will remain supported. And they also decided to look at a new futuristic motherboard design. Oh my goodness, if you want to drool over this, holy cow. It's called Prime Utopia. The conceptual design, obviously this is a futuristic motherboard design. It's not out yet, but the design features rear-facing expansion slots, swappable I.O. ports, liquid cooling, and a programmable 7-inch OLED touch screen that displays info like temperature, clock speeds, etc. It's a weird and innovative design that turns ATX motherboard conventions on its head. This is Asus. So, whew, it's interesting. Asus, stepping up its game. Monitors, 
If you're considering upgrading your monitor soon, there were several options shown off at Computex 2019 worth men mentioning. The uh, first and wildest of all are two portable monitors from Asus's Republic of Gamers line. Here is the ROG Strix XG17. Uh, why do you guys always have to tease all this kind of stuff? You need to actually make me f fight amongst myself as to which product I want. So it's a 17.3 inch IPS full HD monitor that tops out at a 244 hertz refresh rate with a three millisecond response time and adaptive sync. In other words, virtually zero input lag and buttery smooth video. It supports micro HDMI and USB type C video input. Interestingly, the Strix XG17 is battery powered. Huh? with an expected battery life of three hours when the high refresh rate is on, though it can be lowered to increase playtime and can be charged or plugged into a dedicated power source via the fast charge supported USB type C port. Also, we're looking at the other portable option, a 27 inch 4K mini LED monitor known as the ROG Swift PG27UQX. This particular model also supports high refresh rates up to 144 hertz NVIDIA G-Sync, as well as support for display HDR1000, DCI-P3 97%, and Adobe RGB 99% wide color gamuts. Oh, but if you thought that was all we were going to talk about, well, MSI came out with its Optics MPG 341 CQR gaming monitor. This baby is curved. It can also change its settings for different users via facial recognition. The seconds well, uh, let's see. Ooh, while well, they misspelled that, specs for the 34-inch monitor itself are impressive. A 2440 by 1440 QHD resolution, 144 hertz refresh rate with a one millisecond response time, 21 by 9 aspect ratio, 1800R curvature, and an anti-glare VA display. The kicker is that the monitor has a built-in AI that can recognize your face and change your display settings based on your saved personal preferences neat idea <clears throat> even if this facial recognition software feels a little bit creepy so outside of that other miscellaneous announcements from computex 2019 so far nvidia is releasing quake 2 rtx for free on june 6 to help show off the ray tracing power or prowess of its new rtx series of gpus Razer will begin rolling out expanded cross compatibility between its chroma software and other rgb lighting systems You'll be able to use Chroma with a wider array of products that have programmable RGB LEDs, and more of Razer's products will soon be compatible with non-Chroma software. And finally, mobile computing company Qualcomm announced a collaboration with Lenovo to create a Snapdragon-powered 5G PC. But they're not quite sure how entirely the whole 5G thing is going to shake out, but projects like this are at least interesting to see. So, there you go. Computex 2019. I just wrapped up the whole entire day in a nutshell, so um, you're welcome and uh, thank you. And um, interesting, interesting new tech coming out. So, with that being said, let's head on to the next story. So, some genius decided to infect a laptop with not one, not two, not five, but six destructive computer viruses, and then had the great idea. Let's go sell it. Well, they sold it, and it sold for $1.3 million. No, I'm not making this up. <laughs> a used Samsung NC10 costs less than $200, but a used one with, well, all of this malware on it is apparently worth $1.345, that's right, million dollars, so long as it's art. Internet artist Guo Udong created the Persistence of Chaos at the behest of cybersecurity company Deep Instinct, with the help of engineers, the artist installed six types of malware into the 2008 laptop. According to The Verge, Guo chose the viruses based on the amount of financial havoc each has wreaked. Namely, Black Energy, Dark Tequila, I Love You, My Dome, Doom, So Big, and WannaCry, which was used in a cyber attack in May 2017 that was alleged to have originated in North Korea and infected more than 2,000 computers in 150 countries. The artist is currently streaming a previewing of the Pandora's Notebook on Twitch, and it's live right now. Having fun. So long as the computer remains disconnected from Wi-Fi or USB plug, the cocktail of digital horrors it contains can't spread. 
Now, as a buyer, you recognize that this work represents a potential security hazard. Read the disclaimer on the auction page. By submitting a bid, you agree and acknowledge that you're purchasing this work as a piece of art or for academic reasons, and you have no intention of disseminating any malware. Uh, speaking to The Verge, Goal referred to the laptop as a kind of bestiary, a catalog of historical threats, you know, a museum of threats. The artist explained he wanted to create a physical representation of the worst cyber threats. We have this fantasy that things that happen in computers can't actually affect us, but this is absurd. Weaponized viruses that affect power grids or public infrastructure can cause direct harm. According to Artnet, the project cost around $10,000 to bring to fruition, with the bulk of the expenses chalked up to taking measures to ensure the computer was completely air-gapped, while making sure that a computer is never connected online, should be a relatively cheap procedure, if not free. Well, we'll take their word for it. No matter what, we're looking at an insane return on investment after the auction sale. Final bid came in yesterday night. Jonathan Kaft then, a deep instinct spokesperson, told Gizmodo the company does not know the identity of the winner, but the company is amazed at the price. He clarified that since all the malware in the computer is old, there is no chance that it will cause any harm as available virus protection safeguards against these threats already. So... Yeah, um, oh, what is the, uh, that one virus that I'm wondering if it's on it or not? Do you guys happen to know Irene Domova? Sorry, if you didn't get that reference, you guys are definitely not the geeks I'm looking for, because I'm just going to say pocket protectors for life. That's all I'm going to say, because I guarantee you, like, half of you like, well, what the heck are you talking about? How much TV do you watch? Well, I uh, watch fair enough of it, and only the ones that I'm interested in, and I can't believe you didn't guess this. I'm going to actually, actually, you know what? No, I'm not even going to give you guys the satisfaction of giving you the answer. I want you guys to guess what exactly I was just referring to in the comments section down below. <laughs> I really want to see if anybody just got the joke that I just put together. Keyword, Irene Demola. So... Yeah, uh, Guo told Artnet he's considering two plans for his proceeds of the Persistence of Chaos. Spend it on another project or burn it all. Well, you can do, I guess, whatever you want with it. Uh, Guo, you uh, made a work of art, so uh, good luck, buddy. <laughs> all right, moving on to more gadget news. I, apparently, we got a lot of gadget news coming in today. HP's Envy laptops get our, are getting a new wood option. Aw, uh, yeah. Now, it's interesting to see the continuing evolution of HP's laptop division into a more premium, aspirational brand. That shift is typified by the swath of natural colors the company is offering. Last November, it added a real leather option to its Spectre Folio line. I believe I covered that last year. And now it's offering the HP Envy line in two different wood options. HP is offering a dark option, Nightfall Black, with natural walnut alongside a lighter alternative called natural silver with pale birch. No matter what option you choose, HP promises that each laptop will be unique thanks to the natural variation found in the wood. Well, I'm so glad that's actual wood. These options will be available across the Envy line, including on the Envy 13, Envy 360 13, Envy X360 15, and the desktop replacement Envy 17. These will come with the latest and greatest silicon from AMD, and Intel. In terms of software, the machines ship with Amazon Alexa pre-installed, which makes sense given Cortana's assistant has stagnated somewhat. It also comes with HP SureView, which creates a digital privacy shield, and HP Webcam Kill Switch, which is well, obviously self-explanatory. HP sends the Envy is the world's PCs first with authentic wood, which isn't, well, strictly speaking true. The Volta V gaming computer released in 2017 was also constructed of walnut and bamboo. On the cheaper side of things, there's also the Endless Mission 1 released the same year, which came with a bamboo and polymer chassis. But, well, I shouldn't really detract from the fact that this is a genuinely gorgeous machine. Wouldn't be surprised to see HP sell a whole load of its new NV laptops as Windows reasserts itself as a home for developers and prosumers, I guess. You can expect to see a rising demand for these more premium machines. HP says the wood-clad laptops should go on sale around autumn 2019 with specs and pricing to be announced closer to launch date. So there you go. NV laptops. They got wood. Yeah. All right. Well, if you thought that was weird, an exclusive look at Intel's wild gaming laptop prototype. It's called 
well, the honeycomb glacier. And there's a whole video that goes along with it, too. Look at this. Ay, ay, ay. If, okay, according to the author of this article from The Verge is being honest, the phrase honeycomb glacier makes them think of a frosty dessert with a crunchy bee-produced treat on top. Not really a concept gaming PC, but standing in a semi-secret lab deep inside Intel Santa Clara headquarters, I can't help but think it's the most convincing argument ever made for a beefy laptop with two screens. Now, you may know that chip makers like Intel don't just produce processors. They spend big bucks building new markets for those chips by figuring out what people want in their next computer and working with PC manufacturers to make those new features a reality. Sometimes they build entire example PCs for the industry to crib, like we saw firsthand when Intel's dual-screen Tiger Rapids prototype became the Lenovo Yogabook C930 last year. For 2019, Intel is building something a little beefier than that of a tiny notebook of a PC. Intel's Honeycomb Glacier is an attempt to bring two screens to the gaming audience, a 15.6-inch 1080p primary panel and a 12.3-inch 920 by 720 secondary screen in a way that complements instead of distracting from their games. And you guys wondering, do we have pictures? <laughs> well, yeah, look at all these pictures. Look at that. There's another one. There's a close-up. There's a side view. There's a top view. Oh, man. Whew. Look at that. So, at least twice in the past decade, Intel has realized that secondary screens are an opportunity. It famously partnered with Razer to build the original Switchblade prototype that stole the show at CES 2011, in case you forgot all about that, as well as the first Razer Blade laptop that fit an entire screen into the touchpad for the machine. But where practically every laptop with a secondary screen has required you to hunch over your keyboard, even the flashy new Asus ZenBook Pro Duo and the HP Omen X2S that were just announced at Computex, the Honeycomb Glacier lifts both its screens up into the air using a unique double hinge. Intel is so proud of this hinge it wouldn't even let us take pictures or video or the internal mechanism, but it works like this. When you lift the screen, it'll automatically stay propped up to any angle of your choice thanks to a mechanical one-way roller clutch, and you press a little black button on the left side to disengage that clutch when you want to fold it down. So, at the same time, Intel takes advantage of the extra real estate underneath the hinge to fill a purpose-built cooling mechanism that draws enough additional air across the specially shaped and laid out motherboard to cool up to 195 watts worth of components using a single fan. That's enough headroom to potentially fit some of the most powerful gaming laptop parts in a relatively thin chassis. Now, while this prototype is only rocking a 45 watt 8 core Intel CPU and NVIDIA GeForce 1060 graphics right now, because that's what Intel kind of had lying around, even those chips are currently overclocked to 60 watts and 95 watts, respectively. And since that second hinge is going to be near eye level, Intel also ants added a Toby eye tracking camera that could tie the whole package together. Where Toby is often seen as a gimmick to control the odd game or used by esports players to track their gaze during a match and potentially learn from their mistakes or use it for live streaming on Twitch, here the eye tracking cameras can let you instantly flick your focus to the laptop's secondary screen so you can theoretically engage your Twitch audience, chat with your friends on Discord, or even your coworkers on Slack without alt having a way from your game. Mind you, the software feels super early, still has a couple bugs, but being able to simply look at a chat window and instantly start typing feels... Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Honestly, super early is a bit of a theme with the Honeycomb Glacier. Not only is it a prototype, it's a prototype that uses off-the-shelf components, including a secondary screen sourced from the automotive world, since Intel couldn't justify sourcing a custom screen for a computer that might never exist. Obviously so. Intel's engineers freely admit that they may themselves aren't quite fans of the bottomless or buttonless trackpad or the big bezels around that secondary screen, and they don't seem surprised that um, the author here had trouble dragging an Adobe Premiere timeline around on the secondary screen or when you, they ran into some stuttering and glitches, but outside of that, oh, man, if this is what a device could look like down the road, rare prototype, interestingly enough. We'll have to wait and see how that rolls out. It wouldn't be the first time, but we might just have to wait a couple years to see how things progress. You guys drooling yet? Hey, <laughs> what do you think? about looking between screens and having it switch between windows that way. That's interesting technology. Awesome. Pretty cool, right? So, what is this? Two mock-ups of the Honeycomb Glacier show its material progression. 
Ooh. Beefy. All right, well, I better get on to the next tech news of today. Uh, speaking of tech news, well, this is more gadget gaming-ish. Well, smartphone app-ish news. Fine, there you go. It's not really gaming, but uh, it's Pokemon, so it kind of fits in the whole gaming thing. And if it's not, I, sorry, guys, I don't cover smartphone apps. Maybe I should. Nah, I don't think I should. Pokemon Sleep is a new app that helps you sleep better. As part of the Pokemon 2019 press conference today, a whacking sounding new Pokemon app called Pokemon Sleep was announced. Seriously, the Pokemon company and Nintendo are working together to, quote, try to turn sleep into entertainment. Pokemon Sleep is launching in 2020, and the Pokemon company joked that, quote, several Snorlax were consulted on this. I know we're not making it up. Um, here's the tweet itself right from Pokemon. Uh, Nintendo is working on a new peripheral called the Pokemon Go Plus Plus. Oh, no. And it's actually its name. The idea is that you'll sleep with a new peripheral, and it'll monitor your sleep patterns. Apparently, as part of the announcement, some sneep sleeping Snorlax will appear in Pokemon Go soon. I think that's why. I think that's why. But you have to photobomb and take a picture of him sleeping or something, or you miss out on all of it. So developing news still. That's all we know right now, but... You guys are interested for something to help you sleep better and you want Pokemon to help you do it. They got you covered. And moving on to our last article of today, gaming wise, finally. Fortnite has just revealed a giant monster eyeball under Polar Peak. Yes, I know, there's something under Polar Peak. If you guys hadn't been near or in the vicinity of or on top of Polar Peak, for at least eh, the past couple of days to maybe a week at most, you might have heard some screeching or noise making or wailing, some kind of weird noise going on. Well, an eyeball just popped out of it. <laughs> not kidding. Um, and we're not crying wolf when it comes to the theory that a giant monster was going to invade Fortnite. Been through these theories so many times the past few months, it seems like this day would never come. But oh yes. The day is coming, and it's partially already here. There is something living under Polar Peak in Fortnite, a very large something that has recently been disturbed after that volcanic eruption struck the back of the iceberg, cracking it and shaving off some chunks. And if you didn't know, well, that's when the volcano erupted and we were thrown into the future. Yeah, you remember that meteor, uh, that... what? blast that came streaking through the sky and you're like it's not gonna hit tilted yeah it didn't hit tilted it hit somewhere in polar peak and then it hit tilted and tilted blew up yeah well the one that hit polar peak something like an eyeball popped out and i actually just confirmed this just before going live on the show my wife was playing some Fortnite matches and she went over to polar peak to see what was going on and yeah there's an eyeball looking around and if you get close enough to it it'll actually look directly at you and well, something is awake. You can currently visit this backside of Polar Peak and be greeted with a giant eyeball frozen in the ice. It blinks, stares around at the map, and actually stares at you if you get close enough and maybe pushes you away if you're too close. If you're new, near to it, it'll follow you around. Now, uh, there are also rumblings in the ice surrounding it, implying it's stirring and may break free soon. The monster itself makes noises that... Uh, uh, some people describe as weirdly cute dolphin sounds, but it does seem unlikely it's going to burst forth and end up being friendly that way. My money's betting on it being a dragon of some sort, because we're still trying to figure out what's going on with the dragon eggs in the volcano. Nothing happened there. I think either the volcano eggs disappeared, or they're still there. I haven't double-checked that, but, um, well... In case you're wondering, theory-wise, the monster Leviathan rumors started all the way back in Season 3 when we saw a giant monster footprint on the map, but that went dormant for a while until Polar Peak arrived. There's a constant theory that the next event would launch a giant world boss-style monster for players to fight, yet that never happened either. Epic has been continually testing the idea of doing damage to one object across every server and platform in the game. It started with a random iceberg on a random island, and that was elevated to the various dig sites around the map last season. And then, a giant joint projects, like, moving the rune pieces to the loot lake device, and the idea is that all of it is 
someday we're going to get a huge world boss that players will be asked to fight in mass with millions of players shooting at it across every platform trying to get it through a trillion hp and whatever that ends up being but after months of nothing happening it seems like this wouldn't happen until now that is although who really knows it's huge the eyeball alone is as tall as an individual player so when this thing emerges from polar peak it's going to be massive so a common theory is that it's a dragon as i stated as polar peak contains what appears to be a number of dragon eggs but Epic is always full of surprises, so this may be some sort of original creation we don't see coming. Now, there's a theory that when the monster emerges, we might end up defreezing Greasy Grove and getting that area back. It also seems very likely that Polar Peak itself has the potential to collapse if the monster den makes up the entire core of the iceberg. Now, it's not clear when the next stage of this monster reveal will happen, but keep an eye on. <laughs> Get it? The eye? And go visit it now and again to visit it in all of its glory. There's one still final, final theory floating around, and that's with this picture right here. It might just be coinciding with the release of Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And uh, seeing that it's coming up opening weekend, this weekend, and Fortnite's nearly non-stop branding deals as of late, it seems like a little bit more than coincidence. However, I will say, if it is Godzilla, I, I, I would love to see you record yourself playing the match on Fortnite, and then when it pops up and you see it's Godzilla, just say, Godzilla! That'd be awesome. Because yeah, I say that all the time whenever I see him. I can't say Godzilla right. It's like every single time I see him, like, Godzilla! Okay. I think the show's been going on a little bit too long. Can we press the button? Godzilla! Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm so glad I got that over with. Thanks, Octavius. He's my producer off screen. You can't see him. He just pulled me out of me saying that horrid word um, name. Uh, I would have been stuck saying it forever, but that wraps up this episode of the latest in tech news. Thanks for tuning in, guys. New episodes every weekday, except for next week. I'll be on vacation. The latest in tech news can be found on every major platform, including Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube, Stitcher, Overcast, and more. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know by clicking that like button and leaving a comment. Also, double check that you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on the next episode. I'm your host, Taylor American. Remember, for the latest in tech, gadget, and gaming news, visit technewsgadget.net. Pretty much keeping awesome, guys. I'll see you on the flip side.